You know, free is a powerful word. There's free as in beer and free as in speech. And I'm sorry, did someone say beer? I am Evo Terra. And this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books and Beer, your intermittent parade through the festival grounds of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and tonight we're talking about your home base as an author. Evo, what you drinking over there tonight? Going standard, Dale's Pale Ale. And the reason I'm going standard is I, I bought a bunch of beer yesterday from Total Wine and promptly took it into the uh, library slash drinking room uh, and didn't put it in the fridge. So this was cold. I thought that short story was going to end and promptly drank it all, so I have none. So I uh, cracked open a barley breathing, one of our cherry barley wines, mm. which is still aging along pretty well, pretty well. Damn, it's gonna I be... just remembered I have a bomber of that in my fridge I could have had. Oh, yes, a whole bomber of barley wine. I really need you to be drooling incoherently by the end of our show here. Thanks a lot for not drinking that. Woohoo! All right, so where do we want to start? Home base for authors. Yeah, that's, that's a good place to start for that. This is actually part one of a three-part series, I believe we are doing, covering the, uh, the, the home base or the base of operations or the things an author needs to do on the web. And we're starting with some free tools that uh, really is geared up for the person who perhaps isn't ready to make the full commitment uh, if you will, of running at an, an expensive, um, and, and by that I mean in time more than I mean in money, an expensive, well-developed web property. If you're just starting out uh, and new and you're going to be a digital author exploring the indie world, you need a home base. Am I right so far, Jeffrey? I think you're spot on. I mean, I have, I would, if I really sat down and counted, I would be not surprised to find the number of places I exist online to be in the triple digits. How about you? Well, it was 87 when I counted them up a couple of years ago, so that's so that's easily been, been reached today. And I know a lot of people are, assume we're talking about social media sites, and, and not necessarily um, is is the thing I would like to tell people. We're not necessarily saying that, uh, especially if you're brand new and starting out. I don't I don't know that you're ready to jump into the social fray of things. So we're going to talk to you about three cheap, well, <laughs> cheap as in free, uh, as in beer places where you can actually go and get started. Now, if you're, if you're an established author, you still may find, find some value in these, but when we talk, we'll probably be talking more towards the brand new person, but we'll try and sprinkle in some stuff for the, for the rest as we go through it as well. Yeah, and the point I was going to make is that um, even with as many properties as I have, I still want a place to send people. I meet somebody running into them at a conference, in a hallway, in an elevator, wherever, and I just get a chance to say, hey, look me up online. You know, where is that one spot that I can send them? And that's what we're talking about when we say uh, a home base. So, yeah. so first up is Amazon.com's author page. If you are an author and you are on Amazon, which most authors are, then you are going to want to fill out your author page. It's almost mandatory. Uh, this is going to describe a little bit of information about you and what you do, and you can link to your blog and post your picture and put all that kind of basic information up there. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to have. Um, it looks nice, but it's very Amazon-focused and isn't incredibly flexible. It's under that Amazon banner and is very branded that way. So. I, I like Amazon for, especially for new authors, uh, I like the Amazon Central Author page because of that simplicity and because of that bare bonesedness nature. It's highly focused. Uh, the only way you get a profile on Amazon.com is when you have published a book there. And it's very short bio, and then it says, what books do we know about you? You can claim those books to process and do that, and, and that's it. Uh, it's not a place for you to be gigantically active, and in fact, Amazon hasn't really made it terribly active over there, but they might. And to me, that's the kicker. Uh, Amazon is the 800-pound gorilla in the room, and at any moment, they may start making the Amazon Central Author pages a bit more robust, or they just simply may make them 
more forward-facing. We've already seen that with a handful of authors, and, and I say handful because it's hundreds, not literally thousands, if not millions, that are that are have pages right now. But some authors that work with Amazon do have more customized pages. No, you can't have one. Sorry, don't ask. Um, but eventually, you might be able to get one. So it's a good place to get your feet wet. And if you're going to be on Amazon, as Jeff said get your Amazon Central page up. It's a good place for you to obviously say you're an author because, hey, it's Amazon, and, and that's why you're there. Yeah. So moving on to the second one we're going to recommend. This is about.me. And the cute little URL says about everything you need to know. This is a site to really set up as a home base. That's its entire purpose. You make a profile, and you can pick one of the advantages here is a targeted name. So you can look at about.me slash Jeff Moriarty or Evo Terra or whatever your particular name is or how you want to be known. And you can put that on your business card or give that out very readily. On about.me you can put your profile picture, you can put your bio, you can customize it, you can put background pictures, you can link to any other social properties you have, you can put a ridiculous amount of information up there and really use that as your springboard to everything that you have online from your published work to you know other uh, blogs that perhaps you write or your Twitter account or anything else. Yeah, about.me is what we call a nameplate. It's one thing larger than a business card. You know a business card, you got a little square like that size and you can have your name, you can have your phone number, you can have your email address, that's about it. Well a nameplate site is very much like that except it's the size of a website and your bio is there and a bunch of links to other things so it's like you know an eight and a half by eleven business card where you get to change the, the background there's not a bunch of pages it's not like you're managing a website where you've got you know an about section and you've got a contact section all that no none of that is there these are just links that go off to other things and a quick little bio if you go check out mine mine is very straightforward it's the same three paragraphs I almost always use I need to update those probably and then it's a link off to my my Google Plus page uh, for other people, it's a link to their LinkedIn site. It's a link to their Twitter account. It's a link to all the books they publish and all those various things. They're using it for very different reasons. And as an author, I would I would do that. I would put your profile up there and put links to all of the books that you have on wherever you happen to have them. On Amazon is a perfect place to do that one. But it's a it's a way to give you more flair with yourself. Where Amazon doesn't give you any design uh, at all. About dot me, you can put a gigantic background of uh, you know. You in a funny hat with smoking a cigar drinking a beer, which is exactly what's on my about.me page. Well, it's because you've got style and taste. Mm. Uh, two out of the wazoo. Uh, yes, mostly out your wazoo. Um, the two drawbacks, if I can think of them for about.me, is one, not a lot of people know about it, so they'll see this about.me slash whatever, and it's not a .com, not a .net, not a name they recognize. Some people may not know it. It's small, but it happens. And it's also possible to get completely out of control because it's very free form. And we'll talk about this in a second, but don't put your entire life's you know history up there and you know, you know I was born in a cornfield. Don't do that. Uh, actually a third point that I'll make, I'm again really glad you didn't bust open that bomber of barley wine because I'm sipping this thing here and it is getting hot up in here. <laughs> wow, okay. Nice, nice. Barley wine. All right, I'll let you kick off this third one because I know that uh, you know, you're know you going to have to fan yourself just at the very mention of the name. Right. Well, so the third one is obviously very near and dear to my heart, and that is Google+. Uh, it is it's by no means a nameplate site. There is lots you can do with Google+, but it is free. Uh, it is a, a great place to send people to to give them a flavor of who you are. And it's relatively simple and straightforward to maintain, especially if you go by this book that I hear is really good. It's called uh, Making, what's it called again? Making Killer Google Plus Profiles, A Modern Indie Author's Guide. So this was a subtle, subtle plug. That was me being coy. Yeah, another plug in your wazoo. Okay catch the coyness on that one. But I like Google+. Plus. You can do a lot with it, or you can do a little bit with it. Um, I obviously do a lot with mine, but you you certainly don't have to be quite as crazy uh, as I am uh, on there. The nice thing about it is you do get a much larger space to do your about yourself section, and it's actually broken up, so you can put a little bit of history, you can put a bit of a little your work experience, you can put a little bit of a, a bio in there, but it's more structured. Um, 
There's more fields for you to do things. Lots of great photography you can place on this one there. Uh, Google obviously loves Google Plus, so there's if you have done nothing and you start on Google Plus, uh, if you do a good job of branding yourself, there's a very good chance that your Google Plus page might come up in search results when someone is actually looking for you. Uh, and of course, I'm a big fan of it because it, if you are in the mood for posting uh, content, longer form content, sharing photos, videos, it has all of that stuff built right into it. I'm, I'm obviously a fan. Hey, Evo. Hey, Jeff. What, what is your Google Plus URL? Could you give that to me so I could look it up? Uh, no. <laughs> so that's the major drawback of Google Plus is there are no vanity URLs. Uh, my Google Plus profile ends with an entire big jumble of letters and numbers, so you can't get to it. However, there are some services that you can use. Um, I use one called G Plus 2, and that's G Plus dot T O. Um, and then you can tell it what your Google Plus profile really is, that really long string of numbers, and then you can it will give you a vanity URL for free. So if you go to G plus two slash Evoterra, you can find me. But therein lies the problem. People don't know how to do about me. How do you spell G plus two? Is that the letter G and the number sign plus and then the T O and then put a dot com behind it? See? That's the problem. It's not a perfect system. All right, let's cover some of our tips real quick, and then I'll come back with our bonus weird site uh, if we got a minute or two at the end. Okay. So uh, whatever, whichever site you pick, wherever you're going to have your home base, wherever you send people, you want a good, solid, clean, crisp, succinct bio. Tell them about yourself without telling them your whole bleeping life story. Yeah, this is not your CV. This is your bio, and it's your bio as an author. Not necessarily because you're a file clerk at the local bank. That may be an interesting part of your life, but if it's not interesting, leave it out. Short, sweet bio, two, three paragraphs max. Hey, Eva, what do you think is the maximum number of cats, children, or pictures of boating events that should be going on in your author picture? Uh, a, a number approaching zero, uh, unless, of yes. course, those are the things that you are writing about. Um, <laughs> it really, I mean, show, let your, I think your picture for your bio should show your personality, but if it's like Amazon.com, you've got a square. Put your face in there. If it's about not me, you can make a much larger background, and you can even do the same thing for a header of Google+, Plus. but your, the picture of you is a picture of you, period. Damn straight. Make it personal. You don't have to make it, you know, even though we're saying be succinct, reflect your personality. Uh, have fun. If you're a comedy writer, put that in there. If you're a travel writer, you know, kind of work some aspects of that in there. You know, let yourself shine through these sites, but don't make them into individual books all by themselves. No, no. Um, make sure you link to your other social properties if appropriate. Uh, I have some that are more business oriented than others. Those are the ones I link to. My personal ones I may leave off of my official bios. Uh, use that judiciously. And keep it updated. Don't do it once and forget about it for two years and have somebody think, hmm, it looks like this guy is doing nothing. Visit it, update it with whatever work you have going on, uh, links to new you know, books you've published or versions that have come out, and uh, keep it fresh. Once a year, put it in your calendar, automatically refresh, send you an email, whatever you need to do, update that and keep it updated. Got time for your bonus site, Jeff? Yeah, let's squeak it into the wire. So this one is Vizify, V-I-Z-I-F-Y dot com. What it does, a little bit different than the other sites, is it will go out and pull your uh, Instagram pictures, your tweets, your Foursquare check-ins, your Flickr pictures, any existing sites that you have, and it builds a very visual, graphical profile of you online, which you can then go in. You can connect to LinkedIn, so it'll pull in your educational history and everything else. You can then go in and tweak it, so you can highlight the things that are more important to you, or if you're not really, you know, that don't brag that much about your job as a bouncer in a strip club, you can leave that off, do all those that kind of stuff to it. It's a little bit uh, more fun, but you really have to have some good material online already to build a Visify portfolio. But it's free to do, so go enter your name, plug in your profiles, and see what turns up. Might be fun. Yeah, the worst that could happen is you don't like the way that it looks, and it may encourage you to change your behavior because that's the 
Why it looks that way is because you've been behaving that way a lot of the time. And if you don't use it, you don't use it, but so what? Jeff and I, as we said earlier, have collectively 100 or so individually, not collectively, uh, individually 100 or so of these profiles out there. So go try and explore new things. You might like it. Yes? Yes. yes. I'm done. Take us on. Well, that will do it again. This is part one of a three-part show, so be sure and follow up with the latest or the newest versions coming up. <laughs> Funny, we're about to take a two-week hiatus, but that's okay. We will come back and talk about more things as setting up your home base as an author with some additional tools coming up on the next programs. Um, if you're new and watching us, why, you can find out information that we talked about here. In fact, I will do you a solid. I will link to all of the things we talked about, including how stupid this guy and I look on those properties. Uh, you can find all of that at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help indie authors navigate this crazy world of indie publishing. Sound fun? More information at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for watching the show.